I work at a rest slash truck stop in Massachusetts in the USA. There is a 24 hour bathroom and gas station in this truck stop. One day after work, when my restaurant closed at 12 a.m., I decided to go and sit with my friend who works at the gas station. We'll call him Jake for this story, as I usually did from about 12 to 2 or 3 a.m. It was an average night at the beginning as there were not many customers. I sat there and drank my beer and relaxed while he fared with the customers buying gas and scratchers. At about 1.30 a.m. there were some more customers coming in. I saw two cars park around the same time, one at a gas pump, one in front of the store. Obviously this is normal as we always look toward the front door when somebody drove up, especially because we would either smoke or do something else. I remember hearing the vehicles pull up and looking upwards toward the customers a few seconds later. I saw a lady walking from the pumps with what looked like a young girl, likely related to her, and another car park in front of where the clerk's window is. I saw the woman walk up to the door with her daughter, and another gentleman was walking behind them into the store. As the older woman opened the door after walking over from a pump, her daughter took a left turn, seemingly headed to the bathroom as a lot of customers on our rest stop were travelers and a 24-7 restroom is pretty rare in my state. I saw a man get out of his vehicle which was parked right in front of the cashier's window, Jake's window. The mother walked in and we greeted her as usual, whereas right after we watched the man walk up and open our front door. The man pulled on the gas station's front door and then looked to his left. I was watching both customers with both eyes, and it was indeed strange when I watched his eyes veer to the left and suddenly let go of the front doors as he quickly decided to speed around the corner. Like I said already, I saw this woman's daughter go in that direction, which is the only way to the other section of the truck stop, the bathroom. And so I looked at my friend who I was keeping company during his 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. shift. I said quietly but also decently loud, Does that look weird? He looked at me with eyes that said more than words with the swift saying, It does to me. Keep in mind, a lot of Massachusetts state troopers pull up to this location, as there are very few rest stops within 20 miles as we are in a more urban area. No trooper pulled up this time, however. I didn't know much of what to do, so I turned around as the mother bought items, and I opened the doors that led into the dining room of the rest stop. Since I worked at the fast food restaurant here for four years, I knew about almost everything. I just walked slightly around the corner, and peeked past the ATM where both of the bathrooms were. When you first walked into the 24-hour restrooms, the immediate left is the men's restroom. If you continue to walk about eight feet farther past the wall and look to your left, you'll see the women's room. So I slightly hid myself and looked through the glass door, which we had locked about three hours and 30 minutes before. I didn't see the woman's daughter pass, but when I looked up, I could see the same man clearly passing right by the first hallway where the men's restroom was into the second hallway where there was nowhere to go except the women's room. I waited until I really knew he had certainly entered the restroom. I really did not want to take any chances. I unlocked the door and I pushed myself through and the women's restroom door was already closed. On CCTV footage, all you can see is me push the door open with an arm cocked back, slightly moving. Then the door closes. I ended up punching a man in his face. Then I kicked him in the side of his head. He fell backward and hit the back of his head on the sink. I got completely terrified and called 911, our emergency service. I told them I had assaulted a man in the women's restroom of our local truck stop, but thought it was for a good reason. State troopers arrived after not even three minutes. I already had my hands up in the gas station and air section. They asked me what had happened and I told them everything. After the state troopers witnessed the CCTV footage recorded by the gas station into the rest stop bathroom, they made a decision. The state troopers came up to me and said, any driver who is stopped by a law enforcement officer for a traffic violation and is not wearing a safety belt can be fined $25 and charged me a $25 fine. I will not name any officers that were involved in this situation. I do not know what happened to the possible creep, and frankly, I really will never care for the rest of my life. I don't think I really saved anybody, and I'm no hero, but I hope that day I made somebody really rethink their decision in doing what they wanted to.
For context, I'm male and had just turned 19 at the time of this story. I worked at a gas station in Arizona. I had just finished my shift at around 11 p.m. and locked up the store. As I stepped outside, I felt a chill run down my spine, a feeling of being watched. I glanced around nervously, but the parking lot was empty except for a lone figure standing near one of the pumps. My heart skipped a beat as I approached the figure. It was a young woman with pale skin and dark eyes. She seemed to be staring off into the distance. Her expression was vacant and unsettling. I hesitated, unsure if I should approach her, but something compelled me to offer assistance. As I got closer, I noticed that she was muttering to herself, her words garbled and incomprehensible. Are you okay? I asked tentatively, my voice trembling with fear. The woman turned to me, her gaze piercing and intense. My car broke down. I need help. She said, her voice low and raspy. I felt a surge of unease wash over me, but I pushed it aside, determined to be of assistance. I fetched a gas canister from the storage room and filled it with fuel, all the while feeling the weight of the woman's gaze on me. She spoke up and said, My car is just down the road. Will you give me a ride? I asked if there was someone I could call for her, but she said, No, please just give me a ride. She paused, gave me a look up and down and said, Please, I'll make it worth it. Now, telling by the way she smiled and looked at me, she wasn't talking about paying with money. Plus, earlier when I grabbed the gas canister, she told me that she didn't have any money. So, me being a stupid 19-year-old, I agreed. We hopped in my car and started down the road. We made small talk, and she told me how she had been having trouble with her car battery. I was confused by this. I thought she needed gas. I told her gas isn't going to help with a dead battery. She paused and said, Oh, yeah, my battery is fine. I just need gas. Then silence. I had been ignoring my gut up until this point. Something wasn't right here. I asked how much further her car was as we had been driving down this secluded road with trees on both sides for ten minutes, with no sign of her car. She told me it was just a little further. I continued driving for another couple of minutes when suddenly my headlights illuminated a car on the side of the road. As I drove past it, I quickly stopped and asked if that was her car. She said it was and seemed annoyed that I had passed it. I quickly did a three-point turn, but as I was turning around, I saw another car parked off in the trees. As my headlights lit it up, I swear I saw someone duck down in the driver's seat. I pretended I didn't notice it and stopped at her car. I told her I would wait here, until she filled her car up and left to make sure she was okay. But she insisted that I come to her car so she could pay me. I declined, and said I was just glad I could help, but she kept insisting that I go with her. I told her, No, get the hell out of my car. She jumped out and started towards her car. I noticed she left the gas behind so I rolled down my window and said, You forgot your gas, but you don't actually need it, do you? She stopped and said, You're smart. Then the car I had seen earlier suddenly pulled out and blocked the road behind me. Fortunately, since I had turned around earlier, I was facing the other way. I looked forward and saw the woman was getting in her car. I hit the gas and she tried to cut in front of me to box me in, but I gunned it out of there before she could. My heart was beating out of my chest. I couldn't believe what just happened. I kept looking back the whole drive home to make sure I wasn't being followed, but luckily I made it home with no further incidents. I don't know if they wanted to steal my car, or worse, my kidneys. But honestly, I'm just glad I didn't have to find out. Quick backstory. I work at a gas station on a main route. We see a lot of travelers passing through. Only one person works each shift, and it's a 24-hour store. We are short-staffed, so I agreed to an overnight. I'm female. I work in a state that's always had self-serve gas stations. So this guy comes in. I asked him if he needed any help. He says no. He's getting gas at the pump, but needs to use the bathroom. I go back to work on whatever invoices we got yesterday. The guy uses the bathroom, and then goes back outside. About five minutes later he comes back inside and tells me that he's confused about the pump. He directly says, You might have to come outside to help me. 
Customers don't often say this. They usually just complain that it's not working. So I'm already feeling weird about this guy. I shake it off because he looks like a nerd, and I don't feel afraid of him really. I look at the register to see what error it came up with for his pump. And there's no errors. The register doesn't even say it was in use. Even if someone tries to pay and nothing's wrong with their payment, it will at least say, payment slash loyalty timed out. But literally, it had no sign of him trying to use it before asking me for help. I ask him if he wants to just pay inside. He agrees to, gets his wallet out of his car and then pays $10. I give him his receipt and he says, Can you help me? I don't understand the machine. And I say, We aren't really allowed to leave the store during overnight shifts as it's just me here and it's not safe to go outside. I don't know why I told him I was alone, but he wasn't seemingly threatening. He proceeds to say, I don't understand what it's asking me. I need help. I'm not scary. I tell him again that I can't go outside because it's a store policy for the overnight shift, and say, it's not that you're scary, I just can't go outside. I would have to tell a little old lady asking for help at this hour, the same thing. Which is true, we can't even take out the trash during overnights. He starts to walk away from the register counter now but then again stops at the door and asks me one last time to come outside and help him. I'm pretty annoyed at this point. I've said no twice now, I'm not going so stop asking. I finally say, in a super annoyed tone, okay, all you need to do is one, pick up the nozzle, two, select fuel grade button, and three, put it into your tank and squeeze the handle. I'm not going outside. Then he finally goes back to the car, and the register tells me he had no trouble pumping gas. Also, his plates seem like they're from the state I work in. This kind of thing wouldn't make me suspicious usually but the fact that he originally opted for me to go outside instead of bringing money inside at 3 a.m. is weird. Along with how he didn't bother to use the pump before he came inside to ask for help, claiming it wasn't working and him not taking my first no for an answer. No means no. Don't skip this.